I'd call this uh, July 14th, 2014 meeting of the Caldwell County Board of Education to order. We're glad to see you here with us this evening and certainly hope that your summer is going well and you make the most of uh, the rest of the summer. And we also want to uh, say congratulations to Dwayne Knight for being a grandpa. And we've got a picture on the board there. And I'd like for, <laughs> I'd like for uh, Mr. Knight, if you'll give us some details. Well, it's right across the bottom there, July 11th, last Friday at 7, 21 p.m., six pounds, three ounces, and uh, mom and baby came home last night. Well, that's wonderful. That's great. Oh, yeah. Who did that? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's that's good. Congratulations. We're uh, all in the uh, new grandpa club now. That's great. And Dottie's a uh, 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 recent grandma as well. Okay, yeah. Jo when was that, Joe? Not, not me. Not, not, not me and Jim. Been a while. Okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right, let's uh, begin tonight with our invocation. Uh, may we pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful for this day and for all your many blessings. We thank you that we live in such a beautiful place, and we thank you for all the opportunities of service in this community. We ask your blessings upon our school system as we prepare for another school year. May your supreme wisdom guide us in all that we do. Help us to make decisions for the good of all. And may we always be aware of your presence with us daily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next we have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and we have uh, Jackson Mullis here. He is the son of Melinda and Chad Mullis and Melinda is one of the accounts payable uh, specialists here in the, in the uh, school system. So if everyone will stand, please. To the flag. To the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jackson. Next, we uh, have approval of the agenda, and the board has had the agenda in, in front of them for uh, a few days here. Do I hear a motion that we approve the agenda as has been presented? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Second. Any, uh, any comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. Next is approval of the minutes. And we had our regular board meeting on June the 9th, 2014. Do I hear a motion that we approve the minutes, excuse me, of that particular meeting? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the, meet, the minutes from June 9th, 2014 meeting. Second. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have the minutes of the budget, the special budget session. And that was on June 30th, 2014. And we also had a closed session on that date as well. So uh, do I hear a motion that we approve the minutes of those two meetings on June 30th? I move that we approve the two June 30th meetings. Is, is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And... Uh, I've been kind of struggling for the last couple of days. I hope I can hold out here with the, with my uh, talking, but it uh, gets a little bit better later in the day. I told somebody earlier, I said, don't call me first thing in the morning. You may not be able to understand me. I've got to get a cup of coffee or something. But anyway, uh, next on the agenda is public comment. And as of 4.30 this afternoon, we had no public comment. So we will move on with the agenda. At this time, I'd like to recognize our superintendent, Dr. Steve Stone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad you're sounding better. You <laughs> really did sound terrible this morning, um, but you seem to be on the road to recovery. Uh, we have two presentations we'd like to present to the board tonight for their board's information. Uh, I had a chance to work on another board with Seth Nagy with the Cooperative Extension Agency, and 
was interested in some of the things that they do collaboratively with the school system. So I've invited Seth to come and give us a real kind of a brief update on what's the, going on at the Cooperative Extension Agency and some of the collaborations that we have with them. Thank you, Seth. Oh, All thank yours. you. Thank you, Dr. Stone. Um, I don't know, but, but if you're not sure of what's going on in 4-H lately, Lex has been, has been, if you read the Lenore news topic, uh, we get front page news and it, it actually, it's really cost effective for us. We invite her, she shows up, does a great story, captures the, captures what's going on. And, and I think, I think uh, Lex is one of our greatest uh, 4-H assets, I'll say that. So we've really been having a good time this summer. In fact, I wanted just to quickly, this is our summer We've got our, our summer programs going on, and uh, uh, certainly, certainly the, it's exciting. But, but I want to start by talking about Cooperative Extension. That's actually, uh, Cooperative Extension is made up of three components. There's an ag component, which is everything from horticulture to livestock to aquaculture, uh, anything that fits under that agriculture umbrella. And then there's also family consumer science, home demonstration it was once called, and it, it various names, but essentially once things are grown or produced, what do we do with it? And the third component is our youth component, and that's 4-H. And um, I'll take you back to the summer of 2013. Uh, we didn't have a 4-H agent in Caldwell County that summer. So I actually ran several youth programs with our assistant, Lisa Deal. And at the very first program, I decided something early on, Dr. Stone. I decided we really, really, really needed a 4-H agent if we were going to do programs in 4-H. Um, it was fun. I learned a lot. Uh, but we really needed an expert. And so that's where we searched around and, and had great response to advertising for a 4-H agent. In uh, August uh, last year, we hired Darlene Berry. And... Uh, you guys probably know she, she actually is, is married to Andy Berry, who's the, the Whitnell Elementary School uh, principal. Darling's been fantastic. She's coming up on her one year anniversary very soon. And I've really been pleased with, with what we've developed and the direction our program's going. And what I tasked Darlene with, because certainly there's 4-H at the local level, there's 4-H at the state level, and then there's the national 4-H. And at the local level, what I really want out of our 4-H program, I want it, as far as subject matter, to mirror the other expertise that are in the office. So that's all the agriculture components and all the food components, so that we teach that along with human development type things uh, with our 4-H program. And that's the direction I've, I've tasked Darlene, and that's the direction that, that we're going and as, as you know, when you start something new or with new people, there's a lot of excitement. And, and it is, it's been fantastic. I've really been pleased. I do have a, a short list because I was, I was instructed several times <laughs> not to go over my five minutes. So I think I still have about 30 seconds left. <laughs> um, some of the school enrichment programs that we've done during the, the school year um, with Lisa Deal, our 4-H program assistant, and even some with, with Darlene. We've been going into the school doing some school enrichment. These are sort of uh, relationships that have developed with individual teachers. This includes the, some of the school gardens. Um, probably the, the flagship one is, is Whitnell Elementary. There's a, and, and the reason it's a flagship is, is the folks that are involved with that. It takes a lot to, be, to have a, a garden, and I don't know if everybody's... Um, up to the task there may be other skills they have but but certainly that's exciting to see kids eat stuff right out of the garden um, and, and get excited about it and, and go home and that's connected with our wraparound program uh, Baton and and Lower Creek also have have a, a school garden that we've been working with and there's some other schools as well one of the other things I think is really neat that we've done is the embryology program that's where we actually have incubators we have uh, eggs they go into the classroom and they get to watch uh, eggs hatch and that's pretty neat the other thing they do they build a little brooder box for the chicks to go in afterwards and even a candler because you can actually look inside the egg and you can see the mo yolk moving around you can see blood vessels developing at different different times and that's that's a, a really uh, 
neat program. This year we did that with uh, Baton and Granite Falls, Miss Miss Fox, Miss Ford, and Miss Jet. Uh, and I think we had that we were in seven classrooms. Went and picked up the eggs at the Piedmont Research Station. So um, that was that was I thought exciting, and that also worked into cookery, uh, uh, egg cookery, where the proteins are being denatured with heat, and then there's some science behind that, and that was. Uh, uh, need as well as the poultry science component. Um, some of the other school enrichment programs have been vermicomposting, which I heard was not a huge success because the worms died. But there were so many other things that were that were tangential that, that did work out really well with that. Um, some germination of seeds, uh, entomology. Uh, when it rolls around, there's uh, some Christmas tree, uh, Fraser fir. There's a, a talk on that that's really really interesting and engaging and then it also works into a pumpkin program um, in the western end of the state where we grow a lot of Christmas trees we have a phytophthora root rot problem and so a lot of the Christmas tree growers where they they can't grow Christmas trees they grow pumpkins so it's kind of there's some science behind all that and, and really pretty neat uh, two things that we added this year were tasting we actually did some sweet potato tasting sweet potatoes are North Carolina is number one. We're, we, we grow more sweet potatoes than anybody else uh, in, in the country. So go ahead and, and, and actually taste that. It's good raw. There's a variety of ways. and Some of those, again, are with wraparound in a variety of, of ways. The other was our apple uh, tasting. That was something that we did in the school classrooms. It was really neat. And, and when we're developing these things, we're actually looking at, at what are the kids studying, what are the targets they're trying to hit and then we match that so so with this grade and, and I don't remember the exact grade but they were looking at geography so we were looking at okay if you had a North Carolina apple where does it get shipped to and where are the other parts of the country that apples are grown um, and we also there was uh, some component with grafting or looking at data so the the youth were tasting apples and mark down which ones they like best and they, they judged them on look and then taste and um, they, they created a graph of, of which were the favorite. Then we actually went ahead and did the same tasting at the sawmills farmers market and so we had a nice data set and in fact it was uh, something that was in the paper and that was that was neat but I think I think all total we had about 250 adults that tasted and I think we had about six classrooms so that was neat to try about 10 different varieties of apples a lot of them um, developed here, like the Brushy Mountain Limber Twig and some of those. The other, other things that we've done with the school system uh, this summer, this is the third year we had the student days at Sawmills Farmers Market. That's where all the wraparound students, um, and that's with Mary Kidder, her, all her students came to the uh, Sawmills Farmers Market and they get a bag and they get to put stuff in it and they get to try things, uh, which includes ice cream, uh, <laughs> since that's a, a good dairy product, good way to get your calcium. Uh, the kids get to, to, to experience that and they also get to shop. They get some money that's actually given to them and they get to go home with, with some fresh produce. And that's about 400 students. Uh, and we do that over two days. Um, we've also participated in the Soil and Water Environmental Field Day, and that's where I believe it's fifth grade. They're um, preparing for their end of year tests, and Soil and Water uh, is the organizer of it, uh, Pam Stewart. She does a beautiful job, and she brings in a lot of auxiliary agencies, which include us. This year we were um, talking about the ecosystem, and one thing with 4-H, we want to be hands-on, uh, experience-based learning. And so our idea with that, and we're looking forward to developing this further, the kids would actually become, the youth would become part of the ecosystem. So we had a, a variety of masks and different ways they could uh, become part of the ecosystem. And then they were either a producer, a consumer, uh, all the different vocabulary. We went over that in the beginning. And, and uh, I, f you know, I feel like that was a, a nice way to bring home a lot of the, the lessons that are learned in the classroom. And uh, that's, that's one of the, when we go in the classroom, it's, okay, what are, the, what are the students learning about? What are they studying? And then how can we enhance that so that it's a, it's, it's a nice match there? The last thing that I'll mention, and then I think I'm out of time, 
So no, <laughs> there may not be time for questions, Dr. Oh, there will be questions. <laughs> the last thing, and I'm really excited about this, is uh, we're calling it School on the Farm. It'll be October 8th, and we've been working with Doris Lindley and uh, Donna Burquist. And what that is, there's, there's some interest in the ag community. Um, in this case, it's two, two cattlemen. Uh, along with the whole Cattlemen's Association nurserymen, a lot of folks are interested in making sure that ag's part of the classroom. We're not the only ones. There's Farm Bureau. There, there's several organizations that are interested in this. Um, but, uh, but we do have two cattlemen that are interested. We have some, <coughs> some teachers that are interested. And we're going to do a pilot project with, with two schools, busing them out to a farm, an actual farm, so it, it'll be authentic and they'll be able to experience uh, cattle, pigs, chickens, uh, and a variety of crops. So there'll be some stations they rotate through and then in between, as they're going from one station to another, you know, instead of just uh, a water station, it'll be a water station and then maybe they'll be tasting apples or it'll be something so that hopefully the, the, the idea is to have uh, a rich experience the, the, through the whole <coughs> process with, with an authentic experience. It's a pilot project, uh, so we'll see how it goes, but I, I'm certainly very excited about it. There's a lot of support um, from the folks that have been working with this, and uh, Darlene Berry and myself are helping um, to coordinate it. And so that's, that's something that, that uh, uh, hopefully we can report on that as is a is an interesting success and see how to see how to maybe um, enhance that. But that sort of 4-H interacting with the school system in a nutshell. And with that, I'll see if there's any questions. I, and I did want Seth to to kind of go into some detail about what that relationship is because when he was telling me I had no idea that there was so much involvement with the uh, cooperative extension so we really do appreciate that so I think it makes the experience a whole lot better for well, our well, kids. Well thank you it's it's been a it's been a good experience obviously we we're a we're a, a department if, if you look at it we're a team of of myself and I'm not really a 4-H or uh, a 4-H agent but Darlene's full-time then we have um, Lisa Deal who's our part-time program assistant and then we have a part-time um, receptionist clerical person Diana Ford so we're a pretty we're a pretty small outfit as far as the school systems concerned but I, I feel like we've had a good relationship and it's developed um, on its own with without I guess any formal oversight um, on the October 8th school on the farm yes are you targeting any specific grade levels with that or? yes and I get my grades mixed up. Uh, I believe I believe it's fifth grade. I believe that's what it is. And again, it's one of those that it ties into um, the core curriculum. Um, and and so so the things that we're going to cover, uh, if if it's looking at animals, I think one of the things is comparing things and understanding different ages. Uh, there there was a variety of targets that we're looking at. So it'll. They'll get to experience um, cattle in this case, but then also also it'll be we'll be using the right vocabulary and hitting those targets that are in the core curriculum. Because to me, if if you're a teacher, my understanding is you got to work really hard to get all that stuff uh, in the school year. So we want to make sure that we're enhancing what they're doing and that we're building on what they're doing rather than trying to add something new or off to the side. Mm. I was going to say I was out at Whitnell for the yes. garden party uh, with the wraparound children and their enthusiasm was very evident. They gave us guided tours <laughs> of the different parts of the garden and it was amazing how much even first and second graders knew and what they, they knew which ones they planted and what, what, you could, what was ready to eat and what wasn't ready to eat and they were really enthusiastic about it. The little second grader that took us around um, he said, he said, those are the cucumbers, and, and one of the, there's a master gardener in the group, she said, oh, do you like cucumbers? He said, no, they're prickly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he knew right away what a cucumber was and, 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 and what it was. So that was a really, 
Yeah, that's a that's a pretty rich experience yeah. uh, just by by touching it. But he 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 knew he knew a variety of things, and to me that's that's what I hope. 4-H is hands-on. It's uh, experience-based, and and uh, um, again enhancing what's what the school system is doing. Selfish oh. question. Just because I love apples. <laughs> yes. And all the sampling that was done. I'm really curious if you can remember which was the preferred apple. Well, I can actually. Um, okay, Donnie. Was it? Okay. Honeycrisp was number one, That's and Honey <laughs> Honeycrisp is a new variety. <laughs> right. And uh, That's Pink our <laughs> Pink Lady came in number second, which uh, so that was that was a close a closer second than I would have guessed. Which but, was the second? Pink, uh, lady. Pink, pink, pink Lady. Pink Lady. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that's actually a Henderson County. They actually grow the most. That's our Apple County in the state. Okay. And so we work with uh, folks up there, and all we got to do is say we're having an apple tasting, and whatever's whatever's uh, in season, because because there's a pretty broad window of when you can harvest. Uh, pink Lady, of course. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Pink Lady and the and the um, uh, Honeycrisp, they don't hang around a long time. They don't store well. They don't keep well. Uh, it's something that you when they're when they're ripe, you got to eat them. So if you're gonna do a, if you're gonna do a taste testing with with Honeycrisp, you know you you've got to be kind of on the ball with it. It's not something you can just save. And that's one of the interesting things working with um, youth and adults is the concept of seasons and you know making sure you understand that. Thank you. The August 8th event, uh, how long do you perceive that taking? A half day or is it going to be all day? Or? October 8th. October 8th. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, no, that's, uh, we're, I'm glad it's it's October 8th. <laughs> It'd be a little cooler out there. I came in and it was nice and cool in here. I thought, oh, this is nice. Um, but the October 8th event, it will be, it'll start sort of mid-morning and go to mid-afternoon. Okay. So we'll, we'll have some uh, lunch out there, and I think there was understanding different logistics about how that works. Um, of course, well, we're still in the planning phase on that. Yeah. Maybe there might be some on the board that might want to pop in on that that day. Well, so excellent. Well, I will, keep I, will keep, <laughs> I will keep the board informed. Thank I'll keep Dr. Stone you. informed and, and remind him to share it. Uh, because I think certainly just, just like with the youth, when they experience, it means a whole lot more. I, I think if, if you have the opportunity or the interest, uh, certainly experiencing that event, I th you know, it'll be more than, I, I'm not that talented. I'm, I don't have uh, Lex's ability to, to, to craft great stories. But certainly you will be more than welcome, and please feel free to put it on your, on your calendar, and details will follow. I read Lex's uh, news topic article, and I was very impressed with it too. Very interesting. I've actually, I've actually, I took the bandage off. I was, um, <laughs> we've clipped so many articles this summer. I, I've, I, I, I've got a cramp in my arm, Lex. <laughs> All the great publicity. But thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Our uh, next presentation will be on the Patterson Science Center for an update, and I'll ask Amy Bradley. She'll come <laughs> forward with that. And you, she did pass out a handout for us, so you have that in front of you. Welcome, Amy. I'll adjust this. <laughs> You're a little taller than me, Seth. Uh, thank you for having me here, and I'm just going to focus on what you've not seen since April. So April to today. Um, First of all, I just relisted who was in our pilot program, which was Dudley Shoals, Hudson Elementary, Sawmills Elementary, Valmead Elementary, West Lenore, and Whitnell. For the fifth grade pilot science program and for middle school science, it was middle school, eighth grade science, Happy Valley, Kings Creek, William Lenore, and Granite Falls. And so I'd, uh, the first two data tables you have is to show you the gains and science scores comparing 2012 and 13 to 2013-14 school year. And you can see that they went up anywhere from 45.78% for the school to um, the low score being 17.41%. So we're at Patterson pretty proud of, of those gains. Um, the eighth grade scores went up anywhere from 26.71% to 11.91%. And again, we're pretty proud of those scores um, with the schools that were in the pilot program. 
and the Klein tail. And on the back, there's two other graphs, two other data tables that show you how we compared with county. So the schools that were in our pilot program went up, had a slightly higher average gains than the schools, the other schools in the county. We hope they sign back up this year and hopefully I'll get to present that at the retreat. Our summer programs, we had a partnership with UNC Chapel Hill Moorhead Planetarium and they're offering three summer camps. Our first camp was June 16th through the 20th and we had eight students who attended. That was a little disappointing for us because it's a free camp and we advertised it the last two months of school to all CCS middle school students. July 28th through August 1st, we have 17 students signed up right now. We can still take three more. And then August 4th through the 8th, that's the last uh, a week of that camp. And we have eight students signed up and we still need 12 more. So any students that you know out there, please send them my way. Our STEMtastic Inventions Camp, and I should mention that both of these camps and partnerships came from a Google grant. So we're very thankful. We have received, um, I think the UNC Chapel Hill Google grant was 50,000 and the STEMtastic Inventions was 25,000. Raspberry Pi and 3D printing was the camp we just finished last week. We had 19 students and two teachers, and it was jam-packed full of <laughs> technology. They did anything from um, hacking into Minecraft, which students seemed to love. They did that for two days. Uh, learning how to make their own games on Raspberry Pis. They made a Pong game. They uh, printed, th they d used Google SketchUp and Google um, ScratchUp and made homes and dragons and rabbits and all sorts of things and they printed those with 3D printers and then they looked at circuits and did snap circuits and, <coughs> and things such as that and we've gotten rave reviews in fact the parents of those students and a lot of them were homeschooling students that are in our county we reached out to the homeschooling and, and the Christian schools when we couldn't get CCS students to sign up um, they have signed up for our other camps so that's good our cyborg cockroach camp is next week and we have 16 students and three teachers signed up um, and they're going to be taking um, brains of sheep and working with neurons and making a robotic arm move so you, i welcome y'all to come out and look at that and you two legs <laughs> um, and they're doing lots of other things taking hissing cockroaches which are those big cockroaches that fit in the palm of your hand and putting little video cameras and programming them to work like a robot Supposedly it's going to fire synapses in their neurons. So I'm really looking forward to this camp. Uh, any teacher that comes to the STEMtastic Convention Camp gets $200 as part of our grant to start their own robotics or maker spaces club. So they're really excited about that. In addition, the kids who came got a Raspberry Pi if they came to the Raspberry Pi camp. And the ones that are coming next week get, and I hope I don't mispronounce this, so excuse me if I do, an Arduino, 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 that's it. And it's uh, similar to a Raspberry Pi, you do programming with it. The teachers get those, the students get those, and then there is going to be a set of 20 of each of those types of technology at Patterson for teachers to check out. Our last summer big workshop is called Imagine, which stands for Engineer Making a Greater Impact in Education. It's for teachers. It's focusing on the physical science objectives for grades K-8, and we're looking at content knowledge and then kits from the Boston Museum of Science called Elementary is Engineering. It's a partnership grant that we got. Um, our partners are NC State College of Engineering and NC State Science House. It's a two-week summer institute from July 28th to August 8th. The teachers who come receive $100 per day. They also receive the elementary engineering kits and there are eight of them. Okay, future plans. I'm trying to speed up, sorry. <laughs> Uh, reading Rockets is something that we've been working on all summer. It's a grant that we got from the Coffee Foundation last year for $7,500. And it basically entails a backpack program. So there's 30 backpacks that we're making for kindergarten, 30 for first grade, and 30 for second grade. All of them are different, so 90 in total. And um, they, the purpose of them is to enhance parent-teacher involvement and 
build the love of science in K2 students. They include two to three lessons on math or science and a trade book that the parent reads. The, the students would take these home on the weekend and rotate them out throughout the school year. And we'll be sending sign-ups out to all the schools when school starts back. And then our other big, big thing that I'm the most proud of from this school year is we received a math science partnership grant, which is a three-year grant that totals $519,342. And we will begin that with the Imagine Summer Institute uh, July 28th. And that, it's summarized for you, so I won't reread it to you. <laughs> Any questions? I also forgot to mention and type on here that we've um, branched out to eight counties to try to get them to come to Patterson. There is interest from Ashe County, Morganton Independent Day School, Catawba County, North Carolina School for the Deaf, and Newton Conover are all interested in coming to Patterson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. for all you did. And just a reminder to the board, you probably already received the information about tomorrow afternoon at uh, Patterson at 4.30, there's gonna be a disc golf demonstration so the board's invited to to that if you have an opportunity to be there for that we bring your water and bug spray hope the weather cooperates <laughs> well, we have water but do we need bug spray too Nat yes. spray okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. thank you amy all right mr chairman members of the board moving on down to board action uh, you have in your folder in front of you some changes to the graduation requirement policy 3460 this has been out for one month comment period. A couple of changes, and I want you to look at the one that's in your folder that I want to call your attention to. Also, Katrina, if you want to join us <coughs> at the podium, Katrina. Uh, Katrina put together a very handy uh, sheet that will go into the procedures, not the policy, mm -hmm. that kind of outlines the difference between the old graduation project and what we're moving toward, which is a multi-genre research project. Um, and so 40, 3460, which you have in front of you, um, in item three, we uh, have left, in this particular policy, we've left the name uh, instead of taking out the graduation project, so that will stay in board policy, Katrina, so we can continue to have an activity there so students can come to expect it versus it not being listed somewhere in the policy. So that's the addition there. There have also been some other changes um, by the North Carolina School Boards Association to the policy. You'll see some of those out in red. Uh, as I understand, Katrina, one of the big changes one of the suggestions from the school board association or from the ones who write the policy is that because we have a few kids who will be grandfathered under the old requirements for graduation that we list those as well until those students have grandfathered out. The other big change is on page six um, and this is your second paragraph under B where the EOC test will now count for 20% versus 25%. Katrina, are there any other changes in here that really need to begin? Uh, some explanation and, and have we received any public comment we have not in the office I don't know if you have by way of your role Katrina I have not received any public comment are there any other things that we need to mention before because this is up for the board's vote for immediate yeah, just implementation if there are any additional questions that you may have had since our last meeting that you would like us to address we'll be happy to do so I was just going to say the the chart that you gave us comparing the two I thought was very very helpful and sort of boiled everything down to ju just the facts ma'am so <laughs> that, that, that was very helpful <laughs> thank you and one of the things on the chart too a question came from a board member about under the other aspects mentor and community judges that it's optional with this new uh, research project that's optional based on the teacher not right. the necessarily student if the teacher says we're going to do this and the students can't opt out of it it's a it's an option for the teacher not the students Correct. we wanted to leave some flexibility for our teachers and if they want to require a mentor within their class as part of their project they can choose to do so and if they want to invite outside members in to judge we wanted to leave that to be a teacher's decision and I know the board members how you all thoroughly enjoyed those projects in the past so I hope Katrina will make sure that the high school teachers Certainly. know that the board loves to do that and I as well so hope we'll get invited <laughs> didn't a lot of these recommendations basically come from the teachers so it could flow more with the Cor way that our curriculum's going correct correct we had a committee of um, 
a little over 25 people that met several times throughout the course uh, this past spring. And this was their recommendation, and I, I'm just their voice. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we'd like to recommend approval of board policy 3460 with the with the uh, changes that you see in front of you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve board policy 3460 with the changes that have been outlined. Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, any questions? Any additional questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, moving on to item number two, we do have a policy 3621, which we want to put out for one month comment period, and this policy has to do with athletic eligibility, student athletic eligibility. We have added a section on page two on attendance under B, and there are six different components of the attendance. Uh, this is something that, Jeff, the Athletic Association is recommending that uh, the board policies look at basically it just puts an attendance component that if you are a student athlete there are some expectations that you have regular attendance that you don't miss so many days that you are there on the day in which you play a game you have to be present that day and, and to participate so um, we'd like to put that out there for one month comment period for the public to look at and for board members to uh, take comment on do I hear a motion that we approve uh, for a one month public comment period uh, policy 3621 as it relates to student athletic eligibility. Mr. Chairman, I move that we put policy 3621, student athletic eligibility, on a one-month comment period. Is there a second? Second. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. All right. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, item B, uh, we'd like to put up for one-month comment period a host of uh, policies yeah. by number, and you'll see those in your yeah. handout. Uh, as you know, we've been working with the School Boards Association to update our policy manual, and every time the General Assembly or the State Board of Education makes a change, uh, this, the, ver the School Boards Association uh, has an agreement with us that they'll immediately begin to modify our policy. So we have a number of them that will be put up for one month comment period. You don't have them in your packet, but we'll make them available to you. I think Kathy said it'd be about 100 pages of paper should we put them all out, but we will make them available on the website. Okay. And so if you'd like to look at those, but I think uh, Christine has done a great job of kind of highlighting some of the changes and all of those are driven by new laws or new regulations by mm -hmm. the State Board of Education or by, uh, by law. So we'd like to put those out for one month comment period. And again, we invite anyone who would like to really see in detail the changes. Uh, those will be on our website tomorrow uh, under a special heading of board policies. And we'll get them tonight at 7.30, but they'll be on our website for the public to, to look at those. But uh, they are minor changes, but do reflect changes to state board policy and state law. We'd like to put those out for a one-month comment period. And hopefully, and we'll, and we'll probably keep getting this until the General oh, Assembly oh. leaves and the policies and change. We'll, we'll continue to get an occasional tweaking of our board policies. And this is to be expected, because when we contract with the School Boards Association, the idea is that they'll keep the policies current and up to date for us so for, to make those recommendations. Do I hear a motion that we place the various policies as have uh, been designated in, in our agenda uh, for a one month comment period? Mr. Chairman, I move that we put the various board policies updated annually by the North Carolina School Board Association on a one month comment period. Second. Thank you. And second. Any questions? All the those question in favor? that I'd just like to comment okay. that sure. that since we've worked with them, since we've worked with uh, the association, it's kept us current, mm -hmm. and it always is good to realize that you don't have to keep redrafting policies; that you have something in place that is going to assure you that you're current and on target, mm -hmm. and that we're legal. Exactly, everything's according <laughs> everything's to the law, legal. so we're happy about that. Yes. Any other comments? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And thank you, Dr. Stone. You're welcome. Uh, next, we have the Associate Superintendent for Human Resource Services, Dr. Trish Johnson. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Stone, I have three items for your attention this evening, starting with Exhibit 5. Exhibit 5 is a presented usual and customary uh, personnel items for your information only. 
Exhibit six includes usual and customary personal items that require action. I respectfully recommend approval of those items as they have been presented to you. Do I hear a motion that we approve the usual and customary personnel matters as presented? Chairman, I'm making a motion we approve the usual and customary mm -hmm. personnel items as listed. Is there a second? Second. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Exhibit seven, uh, student request for transfers. Since the last, uh, your last meeting, there we've received 29 requests for student transfers. Of the 29, 28 meet established board criteria. Therefore, we respectfully recommend approval of the 28 uh, transfer request. If approved this evening, that brings the total transfer request for the 2014-15 school year to 367. I respectfully recommend approval of the requested transfers. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I move that we approve the additional student transfers as presented. Is there a second? Second the motion. Uh, any comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Dr. Carol Burns, uh, Associate Superintendent for Educational Program Services. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> members of the board, Dr. Stone, you have in your packet the executive summary for the Title I plan. Uh, this <coughs> is uh, done by Dr. Widener. She's here, so if I can answer all your questions, she'll be ready to do that for you. We've been doing Title I in the school system since 1965. And I didn't do that first project. Joe Oliver did, so, uh, but I do know about it. Uh, this year, the amount allocated to us is $3.2 million, which is up slightly, about $200,000. And almost all of that goes toward personnel, about 40 teaching positions and 8.9 nine instructional assistance. If we didn't have these funds, we would, we would be in a desperate situation. The rest of the funds, of course, are used for to support the educational program in math and reading. 1.5% uh, of the project money must go toward parent development and professional development for teachers. That is required by law. There's a little different part on it this year that I want to point out to you because I think this will be something that we'll, we'll see more of in the future. There is a part of it that Dr. Widener has set aside for students who qualify under the McKinney-Vento Act, and that's the homeless children, and that number has been going up in the school system. We have approximately 200 that we have identified as homeless, and they do need... Um, special assistance so this does take from the funding i want i asked her to give to me i wanted to go over with you just briefly the definition of a homeless child so you would understand because it has changed over the years and these are basically it's children or youth who lack a fixed regular adequate nighttime residence and that includes sharing the household of others due to loss of housing economic hardship or other reasons. In other words, that's the doubled up. Mm -hmm. uh, living in hotels, motels, campgrounds, living in emergency or transitional shelters, abandoned in hospitals, those awaiting foster care, living in a public or private place not designed for humans to live, living in cars or parks or abandoned buildings, or migratory children. Now, just by reading those, you know that almost all of our children fall under to the doubled up mm -hmm. situation. And that has been increasing. So well, it's part of those funds are set aside to take care of whatever needs they might be, they might have wherever they would be in the school system. Our funds are used to uh, work with elementary and middle school children. But if these children were in the high schools, they will be served. So that's a little different bit on the Title I uh, program that's not generally been there, so uh, it takes care of many needs across the school system. So we respectfully request that you approve the Title I project as submitted by the schools and prepared by the school system. Thank you. 
Uh, do I hear a motion that we approve 2014-2015 Title I application? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the 2014-2015 Title I application as has been presented. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Second. We have a second. Any, any questions? I have a question, but I'd like to say I appreciate your giving us the definition because your first thought when you hear of 200 children that are mm -hmm. considered homeless, your first thought is, are they in the street or I'm are they right. without a place that they can right. call home? And the doubled up, I think, is the most comfortable feeling we right. can have right. about what's really happening right. with our children. But those children need help, so that's one exactly. reason they're there. Exactly. exactly. But I appreciate that it's not as, well, it's still not good, no. but it's far removed from what being on the What you thought for when I first when said When you first that. say it. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Burns. Next, we have uh, Dr. Jeff Church, Assistant Superintendent for Auxiliary Services. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Stone, you have before you Exhibit 9. It's a lottery application for debt service for our qualified school construction bond, our first round of uh, loan proceeds. If you recall, this uh, the QSCB is the stimulus project, uh, the first round of stimulus project. With this loan, we built classroom additions at Hudson Elementary and Sawmills, and we also replaced the roof at Gamewell Elementary School. So uh, I respectfully request that you approve the lottery application for debt service as presented. Mr. Jeff, Chair. Th this is a yearly. It's an annual, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the lottery application for debt service for the three schools mentioned. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Exhibit 10 is the QSCB number two, the second round of the stimulus dollars a lottery application for the debt service. <laughs> it, with this project, we replaced the air conditioning at Davenport Elementary, Gamble Middle, and Hudson, Ele Hudson Middle Schools. I respectfully request that you approve the lottery application as presented. Do I hear a motion that we approve the lottery application for debt service at uh, Davenport Elementary, Gamble Middle, and Hudson Middle. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the lottery application for Davenport, Gamble Middle, and Hudson Middle. Is there a second? Second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. And Exhibit 11 are food bids that are presented by our Child Nutrition Director, Guy Gardner. Uh, these bids include food and supplies, produce, milk and ice cream, bread and drinks. Uh, if there are any particular questions, guys here in the office, I mean here in the, in the meeting, he can answer those questions. But otherwise, yes, sir. Are any of these vendors new to us this year, Guy? Uh, no, sir. Okay. And the board may be interested as well. I, I asked you early about uh, uh, on some of these, we're only getting one bid. Uh, could you elaborate on what you perceive to be the reason for that? Well, a lot of it is, like, for example, at Oak Hill or Kings Creek, where it's so small deliveries, mm -hmm. some of the people are not as interested in that sure. anymore. Um, it, they're cutting back. And, so, for example, Bimbo Bakeries is fixing to sell the routes, and the route drivers will have more authority of who and they will serve and who they want. So they're kind of protecting us on a little bit of that, uh, but it's the, as the world is going, it's less people who want our business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other I, questions? I, 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 I was uh, intrigued by the name of the bakery who had the <laughs> winning. I'd never heard of Bimbo Bakery before <laughs> for some strange reason. So. Pardon. All okay. okay. But that's the company name. Okay. I knew I hadn't seen it in the grocery stores. So. <laughs> <laughs> any any other? And I respectfully request that you okay. accept the bids as presented. 
Do I hear a motion we approve the child nutrition bids as presented? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the child nutrition bids as presented. Yes, sir. Second. Okay. Anyone have any additional comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, I, Dr. I have a question. It's kind of related, somewhat related to that, but since Guy was here, not be able to answer that too. Just how the summer feeding program was going. Is that going well? And most locations are. Okay. Um, we had to shut down the Granite Falls Rec uh, location this week because we didn't have enough participation. Uh, but we're serving about eight to 900 kids a day. Oh my uh, goodness. And we're about 21 sites that we have operated. Wow. Mm. That's Great. wonderful. That's Great. good. Thank good. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion that the, the board go into closed session? I move that the board go into closed session. Okay. Uh, and that I would be you back on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and move that we move to closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318. Uh, dot 11A1 to discuss personal issues yeah. in North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A5 discuss real estate issues. Very good. Is there a second for that? Right, but we, you know, we like to get those general statutes out there. Uh, is there a second? Okay, we have a second. Uh, do I, uh, let's have a vote. All those in favor of going into closed session uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we're going in closed session, and we do expect that there will be some action once we come out. So uh, just hang on, and we'll be back shortly.
Okay, uh, uh, we're going to move on with the agenda. And the next thing on the agenda is a report on uh, uh, a conference I attended. I had an opportunity to attend a workshop, and they really had some great breakout se uh, sessions. But I think as the board can also attest that the uh, general session speakers are usually, usually just absolutely outstanding. Uh, the very first one I heard was uh, Dr. Michael Thurman, and he was one of eight children. His dad was a sharecropper in Georgia. Uh, his granddad was a sharecropper. His great-granddad was a sharecropper. Mm -hmm. And so it only looked like that uh, he was destined to be a sharecropper as, w as well, but obviously that was not the case. His dad worked all day long raising chickens and also uh, raising uh, vegetables. Uh, Dr. Thurman's major emphasis in his uh, talk that day was the important uh, importance of engaging parents in the educational process. Uh, he said that his dad always helped him with his homework. And it was probably sometime about the third grade that he asked his dad a geography question and his dad said, I, I don't know. I just simply don't know. And he said something to his dad like, uh, this is something you should know. His mom overheard that and later told him, you don't realize that your dad cannot read or write, but his dad was there with him doing his homework. He was an encourager, a cheerleader. He was there for him when he was doing his homework. So uh, that was uh, you know, quite interesting there. Uh, he also told about that uh, he would go out on vegetable routes because his dad would go door to door selling vegetables and he oftentimes would have to take, as he referred to them, roast ears and uh, a peck of peas or something like that up to the door and uh, uh, give it to the, uh, to the lady of the house and, uh, and get compensation uh, for that. He said that oftentimes as he got a little bit older and he was driving through some of these neighborhoods and some of the pretty girls in the streets, he said he had always ducked down because he didn't want the, the girls seeing him in that old beat up blue truck that his dad drove. Uh, but uh, he said he was all bowed over one day in the seat and his dad said, son, get that head up. So he raised his head up and he said, wipe those tears from your eyes. And he did. And he said, son, one of these days, this vegetable route's going to be yours. <laughs> so he goes on and uh, does quite well in, in school and goes on to college and uh, eventually comes back with a doctorate degree and decides that he wants to get into local politics. So he's running for, uh, I don't know, county commissioner, city council, or something like that. And so uh, he starts going through the community, knocking on doors, handing, handing out his flyers. And he would knock on the door, and the lady of the house would come to the door and say, uh, Mikey, what are you doing here? He said, well, I'm running for city council. And she said, well, I will vote for you. I remember your dad. He was a man of integrity and honesty. And, and uh, so the bottom line is uh, he was elected. He said his dad wasn't there to see it, but uh, in some strange way, his dad did give him the vegetable wrap. And so he was able to turn that into uh, being a, a local official, later becoming uh, a member of the Georgia State Senate and having some other high state positions as well. And currently is the superintendent of one of the largest school systems in Georgia, and that is the DeKalb County, Georgia. Very inspiring man, great, great speaker. And uh, we also had Brigadier General Stuart Rodenhaver. And he was one of the top American officers in the Persian Gulf War in Baghdad. 
So he had a very, very important position there. And he provided what he called a common opera operational picture. And it has many applications across the board and certainly as well as in education. His number one was paint a picture of success and work backwards from that. Two, clearly define what the desired end is going to be. And finally, develop a comprehensive plan that ensures the plan is understood even to the lowest operational level. So he, uh, he had a lot of wonderful things to, uh, to say as well. I'm certain we do a great job in this county uh, making sure that everybody all the way uh, from the top to the bottom knows what our plan is and, and we're working towards uh, the success that uh, we have enjoyed in the past. Also at a policy conference uh, provided by the uh, State School Boards Association, uh, we dealt with a number of policies and, and various issues and uh, examined such things as student wellness policy, uh, employee privacy, school field trips, working with the school board attorney. It, we appreciate you a great deal. Uh, and uh, productive use of electronic messaging. So it was, it was quite interesting. As always, it was uh, a very educational uh, experience. And uh, I think the board can certainly vouch for that as, as you go to these workshops there's always something good to be learned. So uh, that is uh, the report that I have for, for those workshops. Next, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Dr. Stone, who uh, has some uh, recommendations. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I have several administrative <coughs> recommendations. I'd like to, to start with the first with a recommendations for a continuation of a contract uh, for a four-year contract. Uh, these are principles that we need to do this individually if it's possible. I'd like to recommend Sharman Fazale for a four-year renewal of her contract at Gamewell Elementary. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh extend a four-year contract to uh, Sharman Fazale. Game on elementary as presented by the superintendent. Okay, do I hear a second? Second the motion. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Our second uh, contract renewal is for Ms. Kelly Smith, currently assistant principal at Granite Falls Middle School. I'd like to recommend her for a four year contract extension. I'll need to recuse, recuse myself from that as a family member. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a motion that we approve uh, Kelly Smith as a uh, for a four-year contract at uh, uh, Granite Falls Middle, uh, Middle School. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve Kelly Smith for an additional four-year contract at Granite Falls Middle School. Is there a second? Second. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. And, and it just should be noted that uh, when we mentioned the school, there are for your contract with the school right, system the school so they system, could certainly right. serve the Caldwell County Schools. Uh, two other administrative appointments I'd like to recommend uh, Adam Windmiller as the principal of uh, Hudson Elementary. Adam is a previous administrator or previous teacher with Caldwell County Schools for eight years at South Caldwell High School as well as uh, a year at Hudson, El Hudson Middle and a year at Gateway Elementary. He's currently the assistant principal at Fred T. Ford. We'd like to recommend a two-year contract for Adam Windmiller uh, at Hudson Elementary. Okay, I hear a motion that we approve Adam Windmiller for a two-year contract at Hudson Elementary School. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion we approve Adam Windmiller, former Caldwell County teacher and coach, Hudson resident, and current Fred T. Ford assistant principal, the principal at Hudson Elementary School. He currently has two children at Hudson second. Elementary as well. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? motion pass. The second administrative appointment uh, by way of, of setting this up uh, we have I have received and have honored a request by um, Christy Holler 
uh, at West Lenore, Middle, West Lenore Elementary School to be reassigned, uh, which creates a vacancy at West Lenore. And I would like to recommend Ms. Amy braswell Lowman for a two-year contract. Amy currently serves as the assistant principal at Granite Falls Elementary. She's also been at South Colwell High School, Granite Falls Middle School, uh, and several other schools outside of the district. We'd like to recommend her for a two-year contract at West Lenore Elementary School. Do I hear a motion that we approve Amy braswell Lowman for a two-year contract at uh, West Lenore Middle uh, Elementary School? Chairman, I move that we approve Amy braswell Lowman for a two-year contract at West Lenore. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any questions, comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion passes. The next item on the agenda, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, is the Patterson Science Center lease. Uh, you have a copy of that in front of you. Ed has been working with the Patterson board. Uh, we'd like to present this for approval. It does, uh, in, what it will do, it will give us accessibility to the Chester Hall. Uh, we'll make some renovations there. It will, uh, will run the length of the current contract we have uh, with the facility. So we'd like to recommend the approval of the contract. I think you've had it for a couple of months or so um, at this time, but the approval of the Patterson Science Center lease of amendment. Senator, I may add, I'm informed by Attorney Hugh Wilson, who's negotiated on behalf of the Patterson School, that their board has already approved this. Oh, good. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move we uh, approve the uh, amendment to the uh, Patterson Science Center lease uh, to um, include um, Chester Hall as presented. Thank you. Yeah, do we have a second? Second. second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. I just want to say one thing. Sure. We appreciate and appreciate your help, certainly with, with that. And, bringing all that together okay the next item on the agenda is it's that time of year for us to do the superintendent's evaluation and each of the board members have the instrument that you're familiar with that you've used in the past so we just need to uh, uh, approve that instrument uh, to use again this year do I hear a motion that we approve the superintendent's evaluation instrument that you have before you mr. chairman I move that we approve the um, the superintendent's evaluation form that we have received. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any comments, questions? All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. uh, any opposed? And motion passes. Uh, if you can, uh, we're, we're going to present that at the next uh, board meeting, and that will be uh, August the 11th. And if you can have those back to me or drop them off here at the Ed Center by the end of the month, by the 31st, and that will give me time to compile the results, and we'll present those at the uh, August 11th school board meeting. Okay? Uh, Mr. Stone, you have anything? Okay. Just one more thing. I uh, want to congratulate the Caldwell County School System on its high school, gradu uh, high school graduation rate. First time over 90.9%. Uh, still unofficial yet to the state board approves it. All five of our high schools above. And Lex, we want to see a lead-off story soon right. about every yeah. single one of the high school principals interviewed about how they got to that 90, over 90% 90 because that's quite phenomenal. And yes. uh, I really want to see a big lead-in story because I think that's a story the community wants to celebrate. Right. Front page. Pictures yes. of all five of our principals. Oh, right. <laughs> Quotes. That is phenomenal. Oh, Last year we were 89.4 and to, to go up a, a one and a half percent in one year, so, uh, you know, getting into the 90s, it's probably going to be a little slower, but that's uh, impressive. We are very proud of that. And uh, so many people are uh, directly involved in that. Okay, uh, next is the announcements, and that simply is the uh, August 11th, 2014 uh, meeting here at the Education Center. And just a reminder, uh, about the uh, Patterson disc golf demonstration tomorrow at 430. You have an opportunity to be there. Is there a rain date for that? <laughs> I, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, it's about a 60%. The weather percent. man says it may well mm -hmm. be raining. But uh, we'll Keith will have exactly. to work on that for yeah. us. Uh, we'll get Keith Hyman to give us a rain date if that doesn't work. We'll, sure. we'll let you know if it's rained out. I think he told me a while ago that uh, 
some of the folks were going to do a presentation, if, and if they had to do the presentation indoors, they would. But they're hoping they can do some of it outdoors. But if it does rain, because I think uh, Dan is going to be out of town for a couple of weeks. Oh, yes, so. Right. <laughs> so come out there at 430. We'll be inside or out. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. And we have a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any and we are adjourned and have a good evening, drive safely and have a great